Yes, yes, yes. Um, welcome to Come Well to another episode, another ether episode, uh, another doorway, another portal, entitled Am I As As I Am As You Are, Just As You Are. Okay, um, I'm gonna dive right into uh, today's episode but before I dive into it. Um, do a little quick infomercial again, once again, the clover line as well is for sale. Um, for my Asazium, t-shirts, sweaters, pants, uh, hats, whatever's needed. Um, uh, is on sale for purchase on my clothing line website as well as on my person. I also make things at home as well, I make clothes at home. And um, it's on sale for $19.99. As far as shirts and sweaters and um, hoodies, things of that nature, nineteen ninety nine. Um, no matter the size, and the book, of course, like I showed you before, as you are, which is my book, titled "As You Are: The Art of Mastering Principle Within Personal Intimate Relationships." <clears throat> okay, nineteen ninety nine as well. When it's bought separately. But together, you get it for twenty nine ninety nine, which is a ten dollar discount. Like, it's like I always tell people, why would you buy the M I S as I am without the as you are, or purchase the as you are without the M I S as I am? They go together. They are symbiotically connected and related spiritually, out of one mindset and one intent, which is right here, direct in front of you, live right now, in this moment. Um. Today's episode um, is based on, oh, matter of fact, for better word, is, is entitled, What is Your Path? Right? What is your path? What is anybody's path? What is my path? Um, what is this thing called path? And why do we each individually have this individual path? which is a part of some collective uh, movement or force moving forward. Um, so basically, because I was gonna title it like, you know, what is your path or how do I recognize my path? You know, some people are like, well, how do I recognize my path? You know, is, is it separate from your calling or is your calling and your path the same? Like. How do I know what's basically what's basically tailor made and custom made for me spiritually? And how do I carry the spiritual mission out by using this physical vehicle? And that's the whole point. How do I utilize this physical vehicle to carry out my spiritual mission? You know what I'm saying? So uh I'm gonna dive into it. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna open up as I go along. But first, let's look at the dictionary definition of what the word path. P-A-T-H actually means, right? Let's look at the, the dictionary definition of what it means. The word path is defined as a way or a track laid down for walking made by continual treading. So, um, and remember, we're looking at these dictionary definitions uh, and we're dissecting it in a certain way and decoding it to out of the dictionary definition or the human brain definition to get a to extract a spiritual understanding of what's being put down in words or letters or as we know as symbols okay so one of the definitions there's three definitions here one of them is a way or track laid down for walking made by continual treading you know a way or track laid down for walking a uh, track is also a symbolical track of mind because we're trying to relate this to the mind. And the mind is of the spirits of the heart. Right? So it's something which we can't touch, which we can't taste, which is not um, a part of the realm of sense. It's a certain kind of just thing, which is. You know, right now you can look at this video and just think about something else. You can think about, you know, what you're doing after this and an hour from now. Tomorrow morning, next week, next month, you can be in this moment but still utilize the device of mind. So it's just this thing which is. So we're looking for keywords and definitions that actually relate back or tie back 
to either the mind or spirit, which is actually, like I said, it's connected. So it's interwoven, it's interrelated, it's the same damn thing. And many different ways of understanding. So one of them is a track laid down for walking. Um, to walk not with legs, but spiritually. See, which is why when your body moves, your mind keeps going. So that means that your mind now becomes the legs and the arms, or the etheric or the spiritual legs and arms, when the physical legs, the legs and arms are shut down and not moving. So you always have something which is moving that is non-physical when the physical isn't actually moving in that moment. That's why they say my mind is running. If your mind is running, then that means I have some kind of understanding of legs or feet. And these, these, feet, these feet have a certain kind of ground or grounding when your mind is running. Because why would you say that your mind is running? If your mind didn't have some kind of, you know, uh, abstract understanding of some kind of legs on some kind of ground making distance. Okay. From one point to the other. The next definition, um, dictionary definition of the word path is the course or direction in which a person or thing is moving. See, now this is tricky. The course or direction in which a person or thing is moving. Now let's look at the section of the, of the definition which says a thing which is moving. But what is that thing that is moving? We can call it time. We can call it uh, life, um, experience as well. It doesn't have to be something physical. It doesn't have to be you physically moving. That's why it says a person or, the key word is or, a thing which is moving. This is what a path means. The dictionary definition of what a path means. So if you're not moving, then some other thing is still moving, which means there is a carving of a way being done for you. Whether you realize it, rec recognize it, know of it, acknowledge it or not. Something is constantly moving forward in order for you to move forward along its, along its course or along its path. So basically something is already made for you. Just like this body was already made for you. Mommy was already made for you. Daddy was already made for you. This reality was already made for you. See, certain things were already made for you. Certain things already happened for you. Like you have the involuntary body and the voluntary body. The violent involuntary, which is something that doesn't need your volunteering, is the heart pumping, the blood moving through the veins and the arteries, the mind going, the lungs contracting and constricting, taking in oxygen from the nose and the sinus down, back up to the esophagus and out. So you have an involuntary, then you also have a voluntary. Like I'm volunteering to make this video right now, which is my own. This is when you deal with the principles of willpower, intention, action, application. So you have different things, okay? So you have a reality which is involuntary, which is the path. And then you have a voluntary uh, function and operation as well which is what you would call choice or decision. But even choice and decision don't really exist to that degree because you still meet your mark. You still start where you're supposed to start at and you will always finish where you're supposed to finish at. Just like every path has a beginning of its carving, there's also an ending, but the ending is also the beginning for something else, okay? And the last dictionary definition is just a course or action of conduct. And conduct is also the word conduit. You know, you are something in the middle in order for something to be. And understand when I say involuntary, you also created what you think that you didn't create. You created this whole body to appear as. You created involuntary functions um, parallel to voluntary functions in order for you to carry out some divine mission. Your path, your calling, okay? <clears throat> um, 
it gets a little more deep into it as well. Um, remember, everything, my whole thing is based upon principle. You know, um, that's what my path and my calling is in this very moment. You see, because your calling from moment to moment, if you were to say that moment had a quantity, was just nothing but the pace of momentum or the seemingly pace of momentum. But let's just say moment to moment to entertain this at the moment. My path of my calling may divert or convert into something differently uh, a year's time from now, or a month's time from now, or a week's time from now, or a day's time from now, or a minute's time from now, or the next second, or the next moment. Things alter dealing with physical activity, nevertheless, you're still on the spiritual purpose. Your know, human activity may switch and divert and convert to different things and transform and transmutate and transmorph into different ways and different things of doing, different ways of doing. But your different ways of doing always validate your one way of being. Okay? You can't be any other way but to be. You can do many things and be doing other things. But being. There is no other beingness. Okay, so if you were to say doing, we can say it has quantity. Being is a quality. Understand? So the being never changes. The beingness of you never changes, which is why your path never changes. Which is why your calling never changes. You just have to be open to it. You have to acknowledge it. Okay? All right, so let's go into... um. The first line of doorway, okay? First line of doorway is attention, interest, and faith. Attention, interest, faith. This is how you recognize your path. This is how you recognize your calling. The calling to the heart. The path of the mind. This is how you recognize your calling. Basically meaning what catches your attention? What holds your interest? And what do you unknowingly move in faith with? And to be and to move in faith with something is basically you're moving forth with its forthcomingness. You're, mo you're moving forth with this faith for the forthcoming of the I which resides behind or within the self. Okay, so it's like, damn, I may be a part of this religion, I may be a part of this system or this belief or this spiritual system or this way of knowing or Zen or Buddhism or Christianity or the Hebrew is, you know, the Hebrews or, you know, the Muslim or, you know, or Zoroastrianism, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Pentecostal, whatever, whatever, you know, um, Christian, Catholic, whatever you are, whatever you are part of, it's fine. That That's a part of your path and that's a part of your calling. It's fine. And you're following these practices and these scriptures and these teachings and these texts for a specific reason. In that moment, remember, moments change just like weather changes. Things go through seasonal changes. And the word weather, like I told you, W-E-A-T-H-E-R is the same word as W-H-E-T-H-E-R. Weather is also whether or not am I going to stay like this or I'm going to do this next. The whole point of this path, which I touch upon in these videos, is to remain open to remain a black hole to remain a black hole moving through your wormhole moving through your path of your calling be open to things that actually just genuinely and purely catch your attention for some reason that hold your interest for some reason that you find yourself 
not by choice or decision, moving in faith with, moving forth with, for the divine forthcoming of you, which is the bring about of your I, the letter I, okay? I self, Lord and Master, this is what, well, it's another one. <laughs> But that's um okay, Shadon, that's what the word is Islam means. I S L A M I self Lord and Master. It's very well known. It ain't uh nothing new I'm giving you. Um so you are the self, you are the Lord, you are the master. You have to find out what it is that is pulling you. And attention, interest, and faith, or attention and interest is a certain kind of pulling. Like you may be in the Quran, but you can help that something in the Bible catches your attention. And then something in the practice of Zen or Buddhism may hold your interest. But for some reason, you find yourself moving in faith with metaphysics. Remember, this reality is chaos and things. Spiritual language is randomnimity. It's random things. It's not in a particular order. And this is a pull and tug reality. You get pulled this way. You get tugged this way. You get pulled this way towards this direction. You get tugged this way towards this direction. You get pushed towards something else. You get pulled from something else. You get redirected towards this. And you redirect into that. And you're going this straight path. According to your calling. So you're calling, you're going like this, with your calling on your path. But during this calling and path that happens, that you're going, you're doing a straight line, or this linear kind of intelligence, you're going straight. But during this, you're going through different transformations and conversions, transmutations, transmorphing into different things to come to meet that point. Along this line, that this divine path has created for you with your own unique signature calling. Okay, so whoever you are, whatever you are, don't be shy. Don't even question what catches your attention, what holds your interest, and what you find yourself moving in faith with. Even if you are a, a part of some society or some religious society or some you know, spiritual movement. If something else catches your attention, and if that thing that catches your attention somehow for some reason holds your interest, and that thing which is holding your interest, you find yourself moving in faith with that, don't deny that because attention, interest, and faith goes beyond the brain, which means it goes beyond the logical thinking. Logic is like, damn, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm a part of this. Why am I doing this for? And then see, when that happens, then judgment sets in. Oh, damn, I'm I shouldn't be doing this. I'm saying it's, it's not right. I'm going against my people. I'm going against my society. I'm going against my scripture. I'm going against my text. I'm going against my readings. It says don't do this and don't do that to be this and be here and only be here and only be this. And you start to feel bad. That judgment turns into self-judgment and emotions start getting up. You know, then, then, then you start bringing the lower realm up. When the lower realm has its purpose, it's like the higher aspect of you has its own purpose. These things, you have to find this balance, which is of the heart, which is why. The lower aspect, the root chakra, is also connected to somewhere below the crown chakra, which is the brain. The brain and the sexual organ are kind of interconnected. They are interconnected, which is why you have to find your middle. Where's my middle? My middle is here. This is the heart. This is the mind. This is where the heart resides. This is where the mind resides. This is where spirit resides. Which is why even you look at the chakra system, blue is here. Blue is spirit. Blue is symbolic of the spirit, which is creativity. But it's also given reference to the green chakra, which is the heart right below it. And the soul, which is in the middle, which is the solar plex, which is the yellow chakra. You see, so this is the crown. Three crowns, the three kings. See? Um, or the three yings, the three kings, the three yings, the three energies, the three spinning wheels. Um, this is where you 
want to find yourself with, between the green, blue, and yellow. The yellow, blue, and green. Blue, green, yellow, yellow, green, blue. Which is why my clover line is made in a certain way. That's why I have the blue, the green, and the yellow stripe. It's symbolic of spirit, heart, and soul. Okay? This is what the whole thing stands for. Amaya Sazium. Amaya is as I am. Most importantly, as you are. Because I am that, and you are this. Okay? This all is interrelated with the path and your calling to recognize it. How do I recognize it? This is how you recognize the shit. Okay? You want to go outside of the logical mind, the rational mind. Oh, this doesn't make sense. I shouldn't be doing this, especially outside of judgment and the brain, because that's what the brain is for. The left brain and right hemisphere, the left hemisphere of the brain and the right hemisphere of the brain, you have right, wrong, good and bad, pure and evil. And this just... It does nothing but it juggles judgment. That's why judge and juggle is the same. It's interrelated. Remember, these are not words. These are things composed of letters. And these are not letters. Letters are symbols. So you have a group of letters or a group of symbols. The same symbols in one word. And the same symbols in another word. It means the same damn thing. You have to decode it and decipher it and make the damn divine connection according to principle. There's a certain study as well that's known as language arts. Break the shit down. Okay? So this is why you want to move with something that catches your attention. You don't know why it caught your attention. Your brain didn't say, let's let this hook our attention. No. It just caught your attention. Let's be interested in this. The brain doesn't say that. You just all of a sudden became interested in it. Let's move in faith with this. The brain doesn't say that. All of a sudden, you just move in faith with that thing. For some damn reason. Don't question it. Don't doubt it. Don't second guess it. Just move with it. Just move. Go with it. Surrender. Yield. Humble yourself. No judgment, no self-judgment. No self-dialogue or verbal dialogue in your mind of how you're a bad person now because you're doing something other than what you were so used to doing for so many years or so many months or so many days or you know, weeks, whatever you want to, whatever your duration was that you were a part of something. There's nothing wrong with being a part of something just like there's nothing wrong with being departed from something or away from something or a part of nothing. A part of something and a part of nothing is all a part of the path. So it's just knowing when to be involved and participating and when to pull away from the involvement and participation. Okay, so attention, interest, and faith. Attention, interest, and faith. These things have nothing to do with the brain. At first glance, at first moment of attention, at first moment of interest, that first moment of moving in faith with it and not knowing why. Don't question it because the brain will give you all kinds of reasons. When you're of the heart and you're of the path, you tell the brain, mind your damn business. This ain't got shit to do with you. I utilize you along this middle path, along this calling in this path, along this calling in this path. I will utilize you as my devices to navigate myself as I move along my path according to my own calling. Okay? The next line of doorway is... You are here to collect and gather. You are here to collect and gather. Okay, this is also a part of your path. Life or living is just one long day of shopping. I just made a metaphor out of it to understand in a humorous way. Life or living is just, you can say, one long day of shopping. To stuff your book bag, zip it up, put it on your back, 
and travel or transcend to your next reality trip or your next life. So don't take this shit too personal. Don't get too serious with this. You just you're just gathering and collecting experiences. And this is what you have sensory and sensation and stimulation. You have these things to function and operate in a certain way to make a memory imprint on you and within you. Because you're just stuffing your book bag and then you're zipping up your book bag and you're putting it on your back and you're moving towards your next travel or transcending towards your next physical experience when you leave this physical experience. Okay, so this is all just one long day of shopping. Saying, y'all ladies, y'all should like that. <laughs> just a joke, all right? I'll take it personal. Just being funny as the man that I am. Okay, it's just one long day of shopping, okay? Don't take it too damn serious. Chill out, relax. Seek balance, sense yourself. The next line in doorway is <clears throat> learning and seeking. You learn to earn and you seek to yearn. Okay? Learning and seeking. This is also part of the path. We learn and we seek, we seek and we learn. But what do we learn? We learn, you learn, we learn to earn and we seek to yearn. Yearn is also connected to the word yarn, which is where you get the whole understanding or the technology or the fabric technology of what we know as crochet or crocheting. And I know you know what I'm talking about. Okay? Yes. Technology of crocheting. To yearn. Seek to yearn. To yarn. To interweave. To become interwoven with this dynamic quantum reality that we currently exist in this moment. Okay? So you learn to earn, to earn what? So you know, to get paid, to get money, and you seek to yearn. So you're just feeding that yearning, or that yearning is that plant. You're just putting water on it by seeking. Seeking is the water, yearning is the plant. You're, you're pouring water on the plant to make, to make it grow. You're seeking to increase that yearning, okay? You learn how to do things to get paid to survive. So learning is of the human nature, right? Right. So you learn how to do things to get paid to survive. That's humanity or human nature. And you yearn to know. Okay? As the all-knowing thing unknown to itself. See, so you yearn to know. As what? As the all-knowing thing unknown to itself. That's spiritual. See the difference between learning, yearning, yearning, learning? It's a difference. To yearn is to go towards, to yearn is to go towards, towards a kind of pulling effect within faith on an unknown destination towards an immediate location understand what i just said it's pulling you towards an unknown destination which is leading right back to an immediate location because if there's no such thing as time how the hell can there be distance it makes it seem as if there's a distance that's the illusion there's a distance to get to to reach to but even when you reach there that destination where are you? Are you at that destination? Yeah. So it means that you are basically the location and you've always been local. So even when you reach a destination, you say it's the destination, right? That's the destination. I, I met my destination. I'm at the location of my divine destination. Okay, cool. Who's there? Me. 
And where have you always been? Now, local. So you are the local thing that met its location at this destination. See, there's a thin line between an understanding of destination, location, and being local. Your destination is at a certain location because the location validates the local thing that you are and always have been, always been here. The destination is here. The location is here. But since we have things and illusional things called legs, there has to be some kind of illusional thing that's making us think that we're moving towards a destination when we are the actual location, which has always been local. This is more of the understanding of your path and your calling and what this whole damn shit is about. Okay. So that's why I said to yearn is to go towards. Towards what? Towards a kind of pulling effect. So you think you're going towards something. So you think you're going towards something. But in actuality, this towards that you think you're doing is actually a pulling effect. You see, you're going, you think you're going towards something, but that towards is actually a pulling effect, pulling you towards it. And it is you pulling you to yourself. So that you, you and yourself cancel out and bring about the realization of the I. See? The of gets canceled out to recognize it's as. You are just as principles. But you think that you are of this person. See? Um, next line in doorway is... You use or utilize common sense to eliminate as much distractions away from your path as possible. Utilize it, you know, with your mate, with your wife, your husband, your significant other, your man, your woman, whatever you want to call them, your creation. This is when you utilize common sense. And common sense, of course, um, it can be of the brain, but it can, it can also have, uh, uh, it can also possess a spiritual understanding as well. Okay. Um, you use or utilize common sense. When do I utilize it? Utilize it to eliminate as much distractions away from your path as possible. Well, how do I utilize it? Or what do I utilize it for? You utilize it for privacy, silence, balance, self-reflection, and space. Okay, those are the principles I want to get to when I utilize it. But when do I know when to utilize common sense and common sense eliminates what i utilize common sense for what utilize it to cease friction and neutralize to you you you, you basically you utilize it to cease and neutralize outer friction and conflict between you and your mate in order to return back to the silence of your mind so common sense, I have a video on common sense. Uh, what was it called? Something Common Sense and Communication. I forgot, it's one of those recent videos I did. Um, so yeah, common sense is if she's yelling, I'm not gonna feed the fire and yell back. If she calls me a name, I'm not gonna feed the fire and call her a name. I'm not going to be the gasoline. I'm going to be the water. So I just say, okay, no problem. You're not feeding the ego. The ego is saying, call me a name. Scream back at me. Yell at me. Do something. Let's keep this fire going. Let's keep this friction going. Let's create some potential conflict right now. And you're saying, no, nah, I'm good. And when you do that, you actually turn into a mirror. And they see their self. And when they see their self, and they see the ugliness. Sometimes that can, they can learn a lesson from it, or it can get even worse, depending on the person's personality, character, behavior, control, and discipline of self that they actually possess, which is not your responsibility. But you're not feeding it. That's common sense. If she's yelling or he's yelling, I'm not going to yell back at him. If she's screaming or he's screaming, I'm not going to scream back at him. If she calls me a name or he calls me a name, I'm not going to do the service of calling him a name either. 
That's common sense. And you're doing it to neutralize the situation, to return back to the silence of your mind, to be back into uh, back in alignment with your path in silence, back in alignment with your path to be able to hear your calling. Okay? You can only hear your calling if you're in silence. Think about that and stillness as well. Um, next line in the doorway is, I'm not too sure where the hell I went with this one. Um, overload, overdrive, constant input, information overload. In the brain creates shutdown of the body, brain, heart, and organs ultimately. As you receive in form, always remain in out form as much as possible. So you don't become uniformed. As much as you remain, as much as you receive in form, remain a thing of an out form so that you don't become uniformed. Okay? A uniforming can potentially veer you away from your focus of your path. Like this body is a uniform, or it's the product or the result of a uniforming between the non-physical and the physical, which is why this body possesses both polarities of the physical and the non-physical. But since you already have this, there's no need to do any extra uniforming. There's no need to unite forms anymore. You see, or to hold a union of forming. It's time to come out of this form. See, but the more you remain, you receive in form, which is in formation, the more you become in a form. And the more you become in a form, the more you become uniformed. But the whole point of this path is to shed the uniform. To come out of form. To be formless. You see, you already are a form. You're carrying on a formless message, a formless path, a formless calling. It is formless. So in order to basically transact with it, interact with it, you have to become the formless thing as the appeared formed thing. Which is why I say you utilize these devices. These are devices, hands, arms, legs, body, head, brain, sexual organ. You utilize these devices, this crisscrossing of everything to carry out this, to carry out this, to carry out this. You don't become subject and victim to these things. We well, don't become yeah objective. Pardon me. You don't become objective to these things. Remain a subject, not the object. Be subjective, not objective. Okay. Everything of the spiritual nature is subjective. It's not an object. The object is just used to induce and conduct certain type of feelings, emotions, thoughts, memory, things of that nature. And it is a part of the path. But according to this understanding, you do not become lost in that. Well, sometimes it's needed sometimes to become lost in it because even becoming lost activates the aspect of becoming found. But what I'm spewing at this moment, what I'm speaking at this moment is to remain on course, okay? Remain on course, okay? On this course. Next line in doorway is something to ask yourself. Uh, to have an intervention within yourself in some form, in some way. How many body distractions, brain distractions, and genetic distractions have you created for yourself? One more time. How many bodily distractions, brain distractions, and genetic distractions or distractions, pardon me, have you created for yourself on your path? Because this ultimately determines how clear the signal comes in or how how clear a signal is 
to receive a calling and to be a clear screen rather than a screen full of static. Because you have to have a clear signal. But depending upon your body distractions, brain distractions, and genetic distractions that you have created for yourself or find yourself within will determine how clear the signal is and how clear the signal is, the divine signal that's going on within you, within yourselves, will determine um, how challenging the call will be to go through for you to receive it on your path. Now, what do I mean by body, brain, and genetic distractions, right? Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean what body distractions I've met, what brain distractions I've created, what genetic distractions, the distractions I've, I've made for myself or find myself within? What do you mean by this? Break it down. Bodily distractions is ill health, imbalance, pain, discomforts. Just to name a few. These are bodily distractions. Try to meditate when you have diarrhea. Try to be still when you have a migraine or a headache or something, or you have ill balance or ill, or Ill health or an imbalance or any pain. Try to sit with your knees tucked and your arms a certain way. Not even your knees. It's not even a position. But just try to sit in some kind of comfortable position when you have some kind of form of what we know as arthritis or whatever they want to call this. These damn names, which is nothing but energy stagnations or stagnated energy or consolidated energy in certain parts of the body that you have to go in and neutralize, which can be neutralized any moment. That you feel. Um, so these are body distractions. Body distractions are what you know is ill health, imbalance, pain, discomfort. These four things can irritate and it can interrupt or interfere with your stillness, your silence, and your breathing. Because it's constantly making you move out of that position into another position. I can't sit like this, I gotta sit like this. Oh, my back hurts, oh man. Oh my knees, I gotta keep doing this and just, you know, work my leg out because I can't really, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to be still, you know. Oh, there's arthritis in my shoulder and, see these are interferences and interruptions and distractions in one's body. So these are body distractions. You have to keep in mind of these. How many body, brain, and genetic distractions have I created before so I can receive a clear calling on this path which I am on? My path that's uniquely custom made and tailor made just for me. So that my me can identify my I. Okay? So these are these so these are body distractions, ill health, imbalance, pain, and discomfort. What are the brain distractions? The brain distractions are constant confusion, headaches, migraines, dizziness, lightheadedness. Constant confusion, always being confused. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do that? Should I do this? I'm not too sure. I got all this shit going on. I got to just, you know, they're constantly in confusion. Constantly confused about things, which is choice and decision, decision and choice, a schism between choice and decision, the brain, the left brain and right brain hemisphere, once again, the damn brain. Constant confusion, headaches, migraines, dizziness or dizzy spells, they call it dizzy spells, and lightheadedness. These five, these five are brain distractions or brain interferences, or brain interruptions that can make your clear screen full of static so that you cannot see your path or makes it very challenging to see your path because your path is supposed to be a clear screen. Like this is a clear screen. You can see me talking on this video because it's a clear screen. But if there's static in certain spots of the screen, you're not going to be able to see this video 
and you may not be able to even hear it because the static also makes a certain kind of noise. So visual and sound and audio. Your visual and audio and audio and visual aspects and principles of your path will become very challenging to decode. Okay? So we got body distractions, brain distractions, or what are genetic distractions? Okay, well, genetic distractions are what we know as offspring, infants, babies. It can be a distraction. It can be an interference. It can be an interruption. It's not a guaranteed and a definite, depending upon how you move around them and how you, you know, have them move around you and how you are moving through life with your husband or your wife or your family, depending. But these are potential interruption, uh, potential interruptions, potential interferences, and potential distractions. Not definite. Offspring, babies crying or screaming in need, seeking your constant attention, focus, love, care, and time. See, because they're seeking your constant focus, your constant love, your constant care, your constant time always on them and that's what we all did i've done it you've done it we all done this because that's just what a baby is gimme 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 i want i want i want gimme 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 i want i want i want so this is just natural you know uh progressive stages of life but these are your body brain and genetic distractions so just to keep in mind of this list, how many possible distractions? How many possible body, brain, and genetic distractions? Distractions I've created for my, I've, I've created within my life at this very moment in order to, ide to identify and recognize my path, which is my true calling in this moment, in this life right now. So remember, body distractions, ill health, imbalance, pain, and discomfort. Your, your possible brain distractions, constant confusion, headaches, migraines, dizziness, and lightheadedness, and your possible genetic distractions, interruptions, interferences, are uh, offspring, which are babies, or babies crying and screaming in need. Seeking your constant attention, focus, love, care, and time. Because focus, attention, and time are very important according to the understanding of the path. Okay. The next line in doorway is, it is a hidden sacred navigation. This is what your path is. Your path is a hidden sacred navigation that only you can identify in everything that you do. Wait, that only you can identify. And everything that you do, everyone you're around, and everywhere you go, look for your invisible arrow. Well, how am I supposed to find my invisible arrow? You'll know. You'll know. So it's, but it happens within turning of events, situations, places circumstances results you know outcomes follow that which is telling you to follow okay your path is a hidden sacred navigation that only you can and only will be able to identify and everything that you do Everyone you're around and everywhere that you go, look for or be aware of your invisible arrow or this invisible arrow. An arrow which is always pointing in the same one direction. That one direction is your own custom made pointing arrow which is always speaking to you and always pointing you in that same direction the direction or directing that it is and does 
has nothing to do with left, right, up, down. It's an intelligence. So this arrow is not about pointing you up, down, or left, and right. It's, it's just a divine intelligence. But nevertheless, it is a direction and an arrow pointing a certain way, and it never points anywhere else. It only has one direction. It's like the path only has this. When I'm talking about your path and your calling, your path and your calling, this is the arrow. You see that triangle? This is the arrow. That arrow. Now do this. You see that? That's the arrow. See? That's the arrow. It's pointed this way. Always pointing this way. Because there's only one way to go. There's only one forward in existence. There's only one life, one death, one death, one life. Which is what I call birth and birth. But there is no life or death, death or life. There's only birth and birth. Okay? So... The direction or directing that it is and that it does has absolutely nothing to do with what we know as left, to right, up, and down. It is an intelligence beyond that understanding. A silent, it is a silent and invisible knowing intelligence that has nothing to do with the purpose and creation of a compass, which is known as east, west, north, and south. It has nothing to do with the knowing intelligence. It has nothing to do with that. It's a knowing intelligence of your divine arrow. This is your true GPS. This divine arrow, which your path and your calling is based upon, is your true, the most truest, most purest GPS. This is your spiritual GPS. Okay? Per se. Um, your GPS is your knowing, supported or accompanied by its unknowing. And that unknowing is the internal hidden language of your divine arrow. Okay? I know it's a little mouthful, it's a handful, but hold it down, take it in. It's going to make sense, it's going to find ground within you. Okay? And this is what is known as. What is your path? What is my path? How do I recognize my path? I'm giving you certain points of possible recognition and certain things to keep in mind and heart. Kima, K-I-M-A-H, which is once again things that I've pertained to and wrote in my book as well. It's called Kima, K-I-M-A-H, which is keep in mind and heart. And certain things, certain practices to keep in mind and heart as you take these practices along with you and your mate and your relationship. Um, but it, you keep these things in mind and heart as you travel along your path. As you are deciphering and decoding your damn divine purpose here. You know, your calling, to receive your calling and a clear signal, static free. Okay. The next line of doorway is the more you find yourself not knowing why you're doing what it is that you're doing. The more it is outside of the brain and reasoning radar, which is what I touched upon before, which means what? Which means the more it is spiritual. Remember, spirit, ritual. What is your ritual? This is your ritual. This is the science. This is the seance that you conjure up and conduct and induce within yourself to carve that path for you to recognize and hear your calling, okay? The more you find yourself not knowing what it is that you're doing and what you're doing, why you're doing what it is that you're doing, the more it's outside of the brain and the reasoning radar, which means the more it is a spiritual thing or spiritual contact you have made or spiritual acquaintance that you have come in contact with. And the more it's spiritual, the, mo the more it's just pure potential at play. Because remember, it's potential. It's something that keeps on going as if it's already, it's like a lit flame that doesn't, the flame never goes out. It's, it's activated. It's on. No, it has awoke. It's up. And it's going forward. 
All you have to do is move along with it. Okay. Um, the space gap and intelligence of potential is nothing but the is nothing but what we know as etc. The word and the dot 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 after the word etc etc dot dot dot. You know, which means that it is the unknown continuing or divine continuation of self continuum. The anonymous ongoing or ever going, which is ever growing and ever knowing. You understand that? Do you understand? Is, is it clear to you? That which is out of reach, make it near to you. That line right there is in one of the albums. My album I got coming out, one of the tracks I have. <laughs> I guess a little promotion. Do you understand? Is it clear to you? That which is out of reach, make it near to you. Okay. It's a very metaphysical album I got coming out. Um, entitled As It Is. Let me get back to the lesson. So, the more it's spiritual, the more it's outside of the reasoning, you can't reason with it. There's no logic that exists in there. It's outside of the reason radar and the radar of logic, which just means it's outside of the boundaries of the brain. The brain cannot comprehend. It's incoherent when it comes to this kind of spiritual understanding. Okay? So, the space gap and intelligence of potential of potential, the space of potential, the gap of intention, of potential, and the intelligence of spiritual potential is what we know as, you know, the, the term, the terminology of ETC, the, the, uh, the word ETC, which means etc. You know, the word and, A-N-D, and the dot, 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 which means it's a continuing thing. This is what the the gap in space and intelligence of what we know as potential is. It's just something that's just ever lit it's forever going which is why i said it is the unknown continuing it is the divine continuation of self continuum the anonymous ongoing ever going which is ever growing and ever knowing. Which basically means you can't put this shit in the word. Don't even try to. Even be putting this into this, these words or this kind of wording or terminology is still ain't doing the justice because it does not belong in the word. Which is why I have so many descriptions of it, identifications of it, but it can keep on going. It's it's pure potential. This is your your spiritual knowing. This is your path. This is a part of your path. How do I recognize my path? This is how you recognize the shit. I'm giving you key points or chi points. Okay? Points of energy. You only hear me listen. Um... Okay, hold on one second. I will be right back. I'm gonna let these guys keep you company for one second. Be right back, black.
Get back to it. Let's get back to this. Nigga, I ain't got no time for your commercial breaks. Get back to this knowledge. Knowledge is so funny. Pardon the commercial break at the moment. All right? Let's get back to it. Next line in the doorway is... And this is for people who seek a teacher for some reason. I don't consider myself a teacher. Never have, never will. There's nobody which is a teacher. And when you break it down in principle understanding or metaphysical understanding, right? A teacher is nothing but a torturer. Teacher is a torture. Not T-O-R-T-U-R-E. But T O R C H E R. A torture. Meaning one who lights a torch. Meaning a fuse of some sort has to first be present in order to be lit. Meaning, meaning what? Meaning the one, uh, meaning. The one in the learning position already possesses that specific potential before the so-called teacher appeared or appears. Um, so if anyone's seeking a, a teacher of some sort, nobody's a teacher, not even me. I'm just sharing my experience with you. And the reason why you're listening is because we are one of the same. Yeah. We're all spiritually connected. So you're not listening to me. You're listening to a, to another version of yourself speaking back to you. And most importantly, speaking through you. Okay? So, pardon me. I got you. Um... So a teacher is a torture, meaning one who lights a torch, meaning a fuse of some sort has to first be present in order to be lit. Meaning the one in the learning position, which is you, if you are seeking a teacher, already possesses that specific potential before the so-called teacher appeared or appears. Every void or voidal existence becomes automatically fulfilled. Every hole gets penetrated. Okay. Learning is a certain kind of penetration. You're learning to activate the yearning. But you think you're learning, but you're just getting reminded. And to get reminded, you have to get rewinded, which is why I say give to recede, which is also a part of the path. You give to recede, which means you shed to return. Okay? And you return in order to reburn. So a teacher is a torture, one who lights the torch within you. But how can a torch be lit within you if there wasn't some fuse already within you present before the teacher appeared? This is the whole point of this damn uh, line and doorway that we just went past. Okay. Uh, the next line and doorway is the understanding. This is the this to. Why to be of love is to be when when you're loving on the path or to be of love on the path. This whole the deep understanding of the love aspect to be of love, be loving, you know. Um, love. Uh, it's all this love shit going on. To have a deeper, more metaphysical understanding of it from an occult perspective of it. To be of love is to be of emptiness. So to be of love or L O V E, this word is to be empty. So you. Seek to be love, to be empty, to become empty. You seek to be love, to become empty. Okay? That's the whole understanding of it. The understanding of being love or loving on this path or on the path or the path, your path, is about being or becoming the absolute nothing. Why? Why do I want to become nothing? So that you may feel light or empty. Why do I want to feel light or empty? To be in full receptivity with at with least distractions as possible. 
So this is the whole empty, being light, being nothing. And you're doing this to be fully receptive, to be in the presence and in the principle of full receptivity, to be in reception mode, which is why some of your great ideas come when you finish taking the shit or even while you're on the toilet taking the shit or you just finish taking the piss or you just finish fasting. See what I'm saying? You're letting go and as you let go, something else comes in. Every void will be fulfilled. Every hole will be penetrated. Which is why the phenomenon of sex exists. A penetration of holes brings about the third crown, which is the first child. Chai, old. Chai is chi, energy. Hmm? So, Everybody, be loving, be of love, be lovely. That's all the shit really means. It means that end result to be empty, to be nothing, to be light. To be nothing empty and light is to be in full receptivity, to fully receive. You get the illest shit in your mind and write down something when you want to toilet. it. Or after you just finish coming out the shower and washing off some energy, some new energy, you wash the old energy off, some new energy comes upon you. And you get the greatest ideas and make the illest inventions. See, so a washing off is, you know, it's 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 a washing off in a certain way. You know, it washes you back to a new a new standpoint, a new uh place of your um, perception. So feel like the empty is to be in full full receptivity with least distractions as possible to uncrowd your view or your viewing so that you may recognize your pathway when it becomes visible to you. I'm sure that makes sense. To be of love is to be of everything and nothing at the same damn time. It is the intelligence of your invisibility. To involve in order to suspend. To be a part of in order to remain apart from. To be in a naive like state of awareness and bliss. To physically drift, physically drift in order to activate a spiritual shift. Which is why I say. Don't discriminate what directions your path may redirect you on or convert you into or transform you into along your path. Because no matter what you're doing, you're staying on this kind of straight and narrow, which is the straight arrow. See? Straight and narrow is the straight arrow. But it has nothing to do with morals. It has nothing to do with mortal and moral it is something of an immortal aspect an immortal perception it deals with immortality not mortality okay um so to be in a it's to 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 be loving is to be in a naive like state of awareness and bliss which means to physically drift Find this drift that you're on. You're just drifting. You're just hovering. But you got legs, you're walking. But even you're walking, you just feel like you're just hovering. And you're just drifting. To physically drift in order to activate a spiritual shift. Okay? I'm sure there's times that you were walking and you're just looking around. Or practice walking down the block and just looking around. Never looking down at the ground. And just looking up at everything as if you told your legs, just walk. Don't look at your legs. Don't look at your feet. Don't look at the ground. Just move. And just be the upper body. Pay attention to the upper body. And let the feet just do the walking and the legs do the walking for you. You're going to feel like a ghost just hovering. Just drifting. And I learned this in basketball too. Basketball practice. My father... Um, he told me, one of the things he told me was, you know, when, when you're dribbling and you're learning how to dribble, 
He says, you know, don't stop looking down because I used to look down. I was dribbling the ball, playing basketball. I used to play basketball back in my day. I was a big sports person at one time. Went to basketball camps and all that. Um, was the greatest championships, whole bunch of stuff. That's the old, uh, my, my past catalogs and my past avatars in this life. And he says, stop looking down. Stop looking down. Every time you look down, you can't see your opponent. And they can steal the ball away from you. They can do this. They can do that. Always keep looking forward. Don't look down. Learn how to dribble without looking down. Do tricks. Do whatever you want to do. But stop looking down. Look forward. Constantly look forward. Stop looking down at the ball, down at the ground. Just look forward and learn how to dribble. And I'm saying with that, how am I supposed to understand that? How am I supposed to utilize what you're telling me? But how am I going to see the ball on the ground and how I'm dribbling? He said, make your fingers your new eyes. And this is what I was taught between the ages of 10 and 13. He said, turn your fingers into eyes, into 10 eyes. And stop using these two eyes to look down. Keep these two eyes forward and keep these 10 eyes down so they can see everything. So what he was basically telling me was to come in touch with my sense. Trust my sense. Have faith in my sense. And have faith in what I know what I'm doing. Because I know what I was doing. Which is why, you know, I've got so many accolades and accomplishments for that when I was in the sports arena. Um, next line in the doorway is, any path, any path, and every path is all about self-reflection. Once again, we're resorting back to the self-reflection aspect or the self-reflective understanding. Any path and every path is all about self-reflection. In order to self-reflect, in order to self-reflect, you must first, first, have to realize the other reality that you are. Why? In order to be it and then glance back upon the previous image you thought that you once were. How are you going to self-reflect if you think that you are this image? What other thing are you going to be to be that thing and look back upon this thing? What other side are you? Or what other spectrum of understanding are you? What other spiritual aspect do you have? Do you know? Do you acknowledge? Do you give attention to? That you truly are. To 